I'm Lou Schoen, an orthopedic surgeon at MedStar Union Memorial in Baltimore, Maryland, here to talk about the ProStop. The ProStop is an arthresis implant, an implant that is used between the talus and calcaneus to help position the talus on top of the calcaneus and correct proper alignment between the talus and naviculum. The ProStop can be used as a standalone procedure or as an adjuvant procedure in both pediatric feet and adult feet. I have found the ProStop a very useful adjuvant in my treatment of these patients. The arthresis concept was to splint the bones in proper position and allow correction of the soft tissues through natural healing processes. This probably doesn't occur unless we have a pediatric case with over two years of growth remaining. In the cases where we would use it in an adult population, we're typically doing it in conjunction with soft tissue or bony procedures. I have done it in 24 cases of adult flat feet where we had a severe flat foot next to a more moderate flat foot. In these situations, I had to do major bony and soft tissue reconstructions on the more severely affected foot. And on the other foot, I just inserted the ProStop. I did so because the patient was already in a brace having trouble functioning and I was concerned that during the reconstruction recovery on the more affected side that the other foot would fail. We are augmenting the strength of our reconstruction by using the ProStop and effectively blocking excessive eversion of the foot, leaving physiologic valgus and making sure that we don't supinate the foot inadvertently by overstuffing the sinus tarsi. It's important to note that there is no weight limit to use of the ProStop implant. The biggest consideration with a heavier patient is the degree of the deformity, not their weight. There was a study recently uh, published in the um, Journal of Pediatric Orthopedic Surgery, July 2015. Chang et al. presented a prospective comparison of subtalar arthresis with lateral column lengthening for the painful flat foot. And they found in this pediatric population that the, both procedures were effective. In my opinion, this article provided a strong argument in favor of use of the subtalar arthresis, given the potential for complications with the lateral column lengthening. That would include non-union, malunion, impingement, need for hardware removal, or worry about extrusion of the graft. The arthresis is a simple, easy, safe and effective procedure versus the lateral column lengthening. Although the lateral column lengthening can be performed and is performed very frequently by skilled providers, the recovery time after a lateral column lengthening is also much greater than the recovery from a subtalar implant. The subtalar implant patient can walk on the foot right away and after two weeks, the stitches are removed, they progress with activity as tolerated. Even though they may be sore and still have some aches and pains and feel unusual about walking on their foot, uh, which has been flat for the last many years, uh, they can still get around. Unlike with the lateral column lengthening, the patient has to be off their foot for six weeks and between six and 12 weeks progressively weight bearing not to overdo it for fear that the osteotomy will collapse. And also, uh, it does take longer for these cases to heal because typically they're done in conjunction with soft tissue procedures. Thus, if we're looking at similar efficacy based on the Chung study between the subtalar arthresis and lateral column lengthening, I feel this is a strong push for the subtalar arthresis because of the quicker recovery time and the lower risk of complications. This is a really interesting case. This was a nine-year-old boy who is the son of an orthopedic surgeon. He was very bright and very agile and was excellent in athletics. He developed a bilateral painful flat foot deformity, left greater than right. He wore braces, performed exercise to strengthen the foot. He was doing some Achilles stretching, but had continued pain and deformity. As he had been active with athletics, he became more and more weak, more fatigued, 
and his parents became concerned about the pain, dysfunction, and deformity. They wanted to avoid a more major reconstruction in the future uh, and were, became interested in the prostop arthresis. They uh, brought him to me from another city to have an evaluation and potentially have bilateral prostops inserted uh, in one anesthesia. On physical exam, the foot and ankle were supple with relatively weak posterior tip tendon function. The foot inverted with four out of five strength with pain along the posterior tib tendon. The arch was low, particularly more on the left than the right. He had a lack of varus positioning when he rose up on his toes, more on the left than the right. He walked with an apropulsive gait without activation of the posterior tib tendon. There was some mild Achilles contracture and some forefoot varus. His pulse's neurologic status were normal. Here's his x-rays. You see here on the lateral view of the foot, weight-bearing, the shoulder of the talus sits deep in Gassane's angle. The medial column is below the lateral column. This is a severely flat foot. You do see the growth uh, centers open, uh, so this is a nine-year-old foot, and we'd anticipate maybe four years or more of growth, maybe six years of growth. On the right side, you see also that Gassane's angle is obscured by the shoulder of the talus. The medial column is at the same level as the lateral column. So on the AP view, you see that on the left foot, we had almost 50% on coverage of the talus by the Nevik. And on the right side, about 40 to 45% on coverage. So this was a very flat foot, but he was nine, and I was open to considering the arthresis as the uh, sole procedure. You see on these oblique views that there were no coalitions. Here's his hind foot view, again, showing no coalitions. When you, when you see him standing here, you see the severe valgus. It's about 25 degrees on the left, uh, maybe 23 degrees on the right. When he rises up on his toes, his left heel stays in neutral. The right side goes into varus. He had weakness with inversion against resistance, and he walked with an apropulsive gait. Here's his foot again, showing the toe rise and the weakness, the collapsed arch with the midfoot sitting on the ground. So we did bilateral prostop implants uh, in one setting. Here you see the guide wire going across the sinus tarsi out over the sustentaculum talus. Then we inserted the, um, the sizer and you could see the lateral edge of the sizer was just medial to the lateral side of the talus and did not cross the midline. Then I removed the implant uh, screwdriver and you see that the screw is still in the proper position. And then I removed the guide wire and you see again that the implant has stayed in position about 50% across the neck with the lateral aspect of the implant just medial to the lateral shoulder of the talus. And here's the lateral view showing the implant properly positioned in the sinus tarsi. Here he is pre-op on the left side. Here he is post-op. And you can see the talus is now sitting up relative to where it was before. And the medial column is now sitting about a centimeter higher than the lateral column. On the right side, here's the pre-op. Notice the obliterated Gassane's angle and the low arch. Now look at the post-op. You see the talus is lifted up. The shoulder of the tail sits back, no longer in Gassane's angle. And the medial column is now about a centimeter and a half above the lateral column. So a very excellent correction. Now let's look at the AP. Here's pre, where we had about 50% on coverage on the left side, 45 or so percent on coverage on the right side and now look at the coverage. Maybe he has 10 or 15 degrees on coverage on the right, and on the left, maybe 20% on coverage. So pre again and post. Now this kid, uh, this is how he looked pre, this is how he looks post. Nicely corrected. Notice I left him with physiologic valgus. Here he is, back at sports, and he went back to sports about three months post-op, and progressively did well. He's able to play uh, at a higher level than he was preoperatively. He's able to run 
fully, no limitations, no fatigue. His parents are delighted, he's delighted. He's not needed the implants removed and it's now nearly four years and we have a huge success, a very gratifying success because we did this in one procedure, both sides, with one anesthetic exposure and a very short recovery time. I do think if you follow the technique and do the proper procedures as indicated, you will have excellent outcomes with a ProStop device. Thank you very much.